I know what you're thinking. In the video, this video is based around H-Bomber guy made fun of drama channel content mills. I know that this looks bad, but I promise, I promise I have unique things I want to add. I promise. And also, you know, of course, I want to make fun of people I think are stupid. Okay, that, that might be the main reason. So now, what happened was, H-Bomber guy uploaded a four-hour epic masterpiece of a video about YouTube and plagiarism. And as you might expect, some fans of some of the YouTubers got a bit angry, particularly those of the internet historian, and really kind of just them, to be honest. And of course, they had many arguments for why what the internet historian did wasn't plagiarism. These arguments range from bad to terrible to not even an argument. And I'll be going over them, because I think it's interesting how bad a lot of these are. And I think it brings up a genuine discussion about how a lot of YouTubers are purposefully misleading their audiences about copyright law. Now many people claim that the video was just posted to start drama with the internet historian. Now here's the internet historian. And here's the video. Notice how he's not in the thumbnail. So if H-Bomber guy is really just trying to clout right off the internet historian, why isn't he? Why isn't he in the title? Why isn't he in the thumbnail? Not only that, the internet historian section of the video is barely even 10%, if that. You see, this comes from our first camp of plagiarism deniers. It's also our only camp. It's people who haven't watched the video. More specifically, people who haven't even looked at the thumbnail for the video. How do you not even do that? Are you that lazy? You know, speaking of lazy, I'm too lazy to think of a trans- Now, argument two can only really be explained through this terrible meme. So Internet Historian creates a video using Mental Floss's article without their permission they copyright claim the video, and then they work it out. Under arrest. No, I didn't steal anything. I was returning something I stole. You know, really genuinely sorry to have to hit you with the Marvel funny moment, but just there is nothing quite as good as that clip. I mean, the argument gives itself away in conception. Oh, uh, he got the copyright claim, then he worked it out with the copyright holders. Yeah, that means he actually did it. He didn't want to give credit, he tried not to give credit, and only did it after he was completely backed into a corner and absolutely had to. And I don't know where this logic of they worked it out, that means it basically didn't happen even comes from. I mean, you go to jail for murdering someone, you don't not murder someone once you've paid your debt to society, that's not how it works. Also, oh yeah, they worked it out. Citation needed. People just started saying it, and then other people saw other people were saying it, and then it just became true in their minds. The next argument is the argument that, well, he did give them credit, which is true, now. But here's the thing, okay? Credit is worthless, alright? All right, I just gotta uh, write my report on the American Civil War real quick. So uh, let's see here. American Civil War. Okay. All right, I don't care about that. All right, so uh, let's see here. Uh, control A, Control C, then Control V. Well, wow, that was easy. I got my uh, entire... I got my entire uh, essay on the American Civil War written. Hold on, I don't want to do plagiarism. I don't want to do plagiarism, so let me just, uh... Credit to Wikipedia. Alright, there, now that that's there, you know, uh... Everything's all peaches and cream, you know, I made this. So, if you're unaware, the internet historian basically plagiarized meaning stole the entire script for his video. So imagine for a moment, if you would, 
you're an author and you just wrote a book and you know it, it gets a little bit of traction you know it's all right people seem to really like it of course and this book catches the eye of a movie executive and they decide hey let's make a movie based off of this book and anyways they make the movie it goes on to make a hundred million dollars and they thank you in the credits but they don't tell you they were going to make the movie and also you don't get any money I don't know about you but I would be pretty pissed off this is quite simply just not an issue of credit okay you give credit to the person who filmed the guinea pig video in your video. You give money to the person who wrote the script for your hour-long video. Argument number four is the idea that the Internet Historian's video is transformative enough to not have to compensate the original writer in any way. I mean, the Internet Historian video has all these nice pictures and animations and a good voiceover narration to go over it, so surely that's enough to warrant it being its own thing. And that's absolutely true. But that's not what being transformative means. Being transformative essentially means the reason you would consume a piece of media is entirely different from consuming the original piece of media it's about. Let's take a movie like Star Wars for an example. You can create an overly long pretentious video review of Star Wars because no one's going to watch that video review for the same reason they would watch Star Wars. You're also free to create a parody of Star Wars like Spaceballs because, again, no one's going to watch that instead of Star Wars. It's doing something completely different with the source material. What you can't do, however, is make a shot-for-shot -shot remake of Star Wars and call it Star Wars. That is stealing. And I know that whole section seems like I'm sucking off a mega corporation. I just used Star Wars because it was a good example. It goes the other way, too. Imagine if Disney, again, stole your book to adapt into a movie. Well, I mean, it's, it's supposed to go both ways, at least. It's supposed to. Earlier in this video, I made the claim that I believe many YouTubers are intentionally misleading their audience about copyright law. Now, let me be clear. Ironically, despite him being the topic of this video, I don't think Internet Historian has actually done this. He's just someone who's benefiting from misinformation other people have spread. I mean, I'm sure we've all seen this YouTube video before. It's a picture of someone just sitting down in their room, and the title is something like, We Need to Talk. And then the actual contents of the video are just them saying that YouTube unfairly copy striked their latest video. And they're usually right, actually. But they're not always right. I mean, I've seen the laziest reaction channels ever try to pull this off. And I've even seen people who post, like, funny avatar moments try to put all credit to Nickelodeon in their description as if that's going to protect them. Because of this, people have just kind of defaulted to assuming that YouTubers are right. And that's not always a good thing. Argument number five to discredit H-Bomber Guy's video is that H-Bomber Guy is being a hypocrite. As a wise man once stated, if someone's only argument for why you're wrong is that you're being a hypocrite, you have already won the argument. Squillian Boyne's Razor. The reason for this is obvious. We could find 800 bodies underneath H-Bomber Guy's house tomorrow, and it still wouldn't have anything to do with whether or not the internet historian is a plagiarizer. But because I think making fun of people who are stupid is funny, I'm still gonna go over several of their arguments, because they're not even doing this right. This is even Nisha Cell, the main character in all of this, I guess you would call it, drama. He's also the most terminally online person I have ever seen. I want to find several of his tweets for this video because I think they're good examples and he has a lot of people in his comments agreeing with him. When I tell you I had to scroll for what is at least 
20 minutes to get to tweets that were four days ago? Dude, if, if anyone knows even Nishercell in real life, please get this man some help. He needs a screen cleanse, okay? In this tweet that went pretty viral, even Nishercell says, I find it very interesting that this man makes a four hour video about plagiarism, but never mentions anyone on his own side, only targets he can paint as alt-right or morally justified. Almost like it's propaganda or something. Now it is true that H-Bomber guy is a leftist and he primarily makes videos targeted towards people who are right-leaning. However, Just one small problem! Illuminati and James Summerton, two notable left-wing video essays, were actually put in the video as examples, both of which have sections of the video dedicated to them, which are longer than the internet historians. And in fact, James Summerton's makes up about half of the video. These are levels of not watching the video, never before seen. I mean, you have to at least admire the balls on someone to not only make a massive sweeping statement about a video they clearly haven't seen, but also make that massive sweeping statement about a video they clearly haven't even heard that much about. Argument number six for why H-Bomber Guy's criticism should be invalidated is that he didn't criticize Hassan. That's it? I know what you're thinking. You just did the section on hypocrisy. Well, but enough people think the fact he didn't criticize specifically Hassan, and I kid you not, I do mean just him, is enough reason for this video to be invalidated. So here's another quite popular tweet from our favorite character in this even niche cell. For someone who super duper cares about plagiarism, you seem to have not mentioned like one of the largest plagiarists on the internet. I wonder if it has anything to do with him having politics like you or not. I just, okay, I don't know how people can be this stupid. It doesn't make sense. Now, I'd like to go on record saying I don't really like Hassan. It doesn't even have anything to do with his politics. I just find him a very annoying person. Now, what even Nishrasel is referring to is Hassan's prevalency of doing reaction content which has been very controversial for not being very transformative. And so, yeah, why don't, doesn't he talk about Hassan? Let's compare uh, the reaction channel that H-Bomber guy criticized to Hassan's channel. Let's compare and contrast them. Oh wait, that's right. He didn't have a dedicated section to any reaction channel. And you know why? Because reaction channels aren't Plagiarism. Because you see everyone, the dictionary definition of plagiarism is the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as your own. Now when Hassan or any other reaction streamer puts their face in the corner of a video, are you really trying to tell me that they're claiming they made that? That they're trying to pass that off as their own work? Now, it might be stealing content, but the video wasn't about stealing content. It was about plagiarism. Oh, but this guy, he's the plagiarism expert, isn't he? And so, that concludes our section on the American Civil War. It was a bloody war, many lives were lost, but I hope you all learned something. Hey, Teach, um, yeah, I have a little bit of a problem, you know. You were out there, uh, dragging... Robert E. Lee all the time, and like, you didn't even mention Hitler. What? Well, I mean, I would say that Hitler is obviously a worse person, yet you didn't mention him at all, you just kept trashing Robert E. Lee. Donnie, this is a class on the American Civil War. We're not at World War II yet. I mean, World War II, the Civil War, they're both wars, so basically when you think about it, it's kind of the same thing. All I'm saying is the fact you neglected to mention Hitler, uh, 
kind of makes me think you like Hitler a little bit. You know, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I am saying that you definitely like Hitler. Oh, and I haven't even told you guys the best part. Um, so why didn't he make fun of Hassan at all? He did! Their argument is literally that he didn't do it enough. It's really unbelievable. Well, if H-Bomber guy really cares about plagiarism, how come his video is only dedicated to right-leaning plagiarists? Answer me that. Actually, Illuminati, a prominent left-wing creator, has a dedicated segment in his video. Aha, now you've proven my point. Because Illuminati was already a very large punching bag. She basically doesn't even count. Well, half the video was dedicated to James Somerton, a creator who is left-leaning and who is fairly uncontroversial until this point. Aha, but think, you have neglected to mention Hassan Abi. Have you ever considered that? Actually, H-Bomber guy does do a brief jab at Hassan in the video. Aha, there you go. You mentioned brief. How come Hassan's jab was brief? The goalpost hasn't been moved. It's in an alternate dimension. Argument number seven is to call H-Bomber guy dumb, stupid, and ugly. I'll keep this section brief, mainly because it's not an argument. As a wise man once said, if someone's only argument for why you're wrong is that you personally are dumb, stupid, and or ugly, you won the argument about four days ago and you should probably log off and maybe block them. Squillian Boyne's Other Razor. Of course, you know, our old friend was definitely a player in this. I do mainly just want to highlight this, because calling H-Bomber guy bald is probably the worst insult you could come up with. It's like calling someone with a Hawaiian shirt and a party animal hat fat. Um, yeah dude, they know. I also do find the personal insults to be a very funny thing to do, because it doesn't even make sense. When you go the victim blaming route, you're supposed to guess what? Blame the victim, not the prosecution. So I do hope that the evidence speaks for itself. The video footage of them committing the crime, the three witnesses who testified to them committing the crime, the DNA samples at the scene of the crime. I just really hope it all speaks for itself. Objection, your honor. The prosecution is a massive nerd. He's never had a girlfriend. He's a complete band kid. His number one streamed artist, this Spotify wrapped, was Bo Burnham. Well, I've heard enough. I say this man's not guilty. Speaking of the victim, what's the victim's opinion on this? The thing that no internet historian defender has asked? What's their opinion? Well, I'm glad I asked for you. They actually did share their opinion, and this is actually really recent. Which is why earlier in the video it sounds like they didn't share their opinion yet. It was very hurtful. I spent four months researching that story. I interviewed park rangers and historians, including the great Roger Brucker. I read four books. I visited Sand Cave. I explored newspaper archives and cataloged hundreds of newspaper clips. It took me more than a month to write. It's very hurtful knowing someone just copy-pasted huge chunks of it. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I spent a combined total of five months working on anything and someone else took credit for it, I would be pretty angry. You know, I think the way Internet Historian's audience reacted to him getting quote unquote canceled is very interesting because they react like every other fan of a canceled person of interest even though this time it doesn't really make sense. They would have been prepared if he was canceled for being an abuser, or being racist, or being a homophobe. They just were not at all prepared for this. Ah, this video is just a clout chasing hit piece. What, it's a clout chasing hit piece with three and a half hours of extra content to fill time to trick you into thinking it's something more? That's ridiculous. Oh, H-Bomber guy's worse than the internet historian though. Well, he wasn't the one that was wrong, so why does that matter? I mean, the logic of the people defending him doesn't even make sense. What, you're absolutely sure that he is in no way morally wrong? What, because he's funny? I mean, what does it say about the internet at large 
that you can be considered more morally wrong for pointing out someone did something wrong than actually doing something wrong. Wait, hold on. Before I go, I need to make a compilation of all the people clowning on even niche or so. It's, it's too funny to pass up. Some of these are real zingers. Alright, so this is the, the best tweet. It's the one where he says the most wrong thing possible. I find it very interesting that this man makes a four hour video about plagiarism, but never mentions his own side. You know that one that I mentioned earlier. He went after Illuminati and James Somerton, two very much not alt-right people and content creators. Did you actually watch the video? Oh wow, they targeted someone who's been a punching bag for over a year. So brave. You didn't move the goalpost, you, bad word, tossed it across the field. Any future definitions of moving goalposts should link back to this threat. The goalposts were instantly teleported into another dimension. So yeah, credit for that guy for the joke I said earlier in the video. That's how you that's how you credit someone. Illuminati counts, I'm pretty sure. Also, so would the main topic, James Summerton. Illuminati has been the internet's punching bag for over a year. Lamal. Do you think people are not noticing that you keep ignoring the fact James Summerton is the main target of the video? Who would have you added that he missed on the subject? Probably himself and contrapoints Lamal. Oh shoot, why did they plagiarize? Damn, where'd he go? <laughs> This is my favorite one. I just want to applaud your bravery for willingly waking up every morning with a concave skull. It must be difficult.